Sometimes you're going to get very weird problems in life. One such example is this data that I'm working with. Take a look, we have four columns, transaction ID, date, region, and the value. And I have null values littered around in this data. So I can't really just go ahead on transaction ID column, say remove nulls, and the data is going to be sorted. Now, if I do that, then I'm going to lose the legit values, which is date, region, and maybe a value here that I'm going to lose. So how do we kind of fix this data and bring all the rows together? We'll find out in this video. Let's go. Now, if I take a look at this data, every single non-null value is the rows data. Take a look at the first row of data, for instance. This is the first row of the data. This again is the first row of the data. And that's a null value. This is the first row of the data and that is the first row of the data. Now, if I have to track the second row of the data, I have to skip the nulls and then pick up the second value of every single column. That's the second row, that's the second row, that is the second row, and then that's the second row. The problem is that the null values are just littered around all my data and there's no pattern that I can just follow to remove the nulls from one column that removes the nulls from the other column as well. So how do we kind of solve this problem? Now what we do to solve this problem is that consider the data column by column. So this is going to be one column of the data and I will just remove the nulls from one column of the data. Then I will remove the nulls from the second column of the data, then from the third column of the data and eventually from the fourth column of the data. Now once the columns have been cleaned individually, then I will pack the columns together to stack the data row by row and that should just solve the problem. How do we do all of that stuff in Power Query? It's ridiculously easy. Let's just start. So I'll start with removing the change type step that is not needed at the moment, and I'll get rid of that. Now, the first part of the problem is to break the four columns into four individual lists so that I can tackle the lists individually and remove the null values. What formula can do that? I'm gonna maybe start to create a new step, and I'm gonna say that there is a function called table.2Columns that can take every single column of the table that I provide, which is nothing but the source table, and it can take all of these four columns and convert them into four different lists. Let me press enter, and what I get is four different lists. At the moment, these lists still have the null values. You can see that they have a null, they have a null. Now, what I wanna do is with these lists, I want to clean them up individually and remove the nulls so that I don't lose the legitimate values. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna maybe start to write the function ahead and I'm gonna say something like list.transform. Um, I'm trying to transform this particular list. This list has got sublist and I wanna go inside every single sublist and I wanna remove the null values right here. So this function gives me a list and which has sublists within that. So I'm gonna say list.transform, this function is giving me a list and for every list that is within the list, what I wanna do is something like remove nulls. As easy as that close the bracket, press enter. It still gives you like a list of a list structure, but the only difference is that all of these lists have been transformed with no null values. And that is pretty amazing. These are lists. I wanna now kind of transform or transpose these lists back into a table so that I get to see the entire table. So this is the first column, then this is the second column. This comes right here, second column. This comes right here, third column, and this comes right here, and then the fourth column. How do we do kind of inverse of what we just did? I'm gonna make a new step. So FX right here. And I am gonna say something like table dot from columns, which is quite the inverse of what we just did. Table dot two columns converts the column into the list and from columns takes the column back and puts it back into a table. So table dot from columns, and I'm gonna maybe uh, reference the previous step, which is custom one. I should have named that, but I'm just kind of going ahead as of now. Press enter. And this gives me the table which is made of the four lists that we had. Now you can see that the null values are gone. There are no null values. The only problem is that I have lost column headers. Now, sure enough, you can go ahead and rename the column headers manually, but that is going to create manual entry and hard coding of the columns. What if the number of columns increased tomorrow so you'd not be able to dynamically process the entire data or the query? So what do I do? I have to take the columns from the source steps. So these are the columns that I have, and these are the columns which are also go inside of the table that is created right here in the custom two step. So this function that I have, which is table dot from columns, gives me an additional input of writing the column names as a list. So I'm gonna write a function called table dot um, column names, and I'm gonna start the bracket. Inside of that, I'm gonna say, uh, hey, there is a table which is nothing but the source step. Please pick up the column names from there. So I'm gonna maybe reference the source, close the bracket, press enter, and the column names also appear. 
This is absolutely magical and you can just do the change type step and this is done so. I hope you like it. This is awesome. All right, that's been it. I hope you like this one. If you have any questions around this one, please feel free to drop in a comment and I will be glad to reply. The only consideration in this problem was that every single column had consistent number of rows, although the nulls were random and we did not really have the pattern to kind of remove the nulls, but the number of rows in every single column was the same. And that's why the data was just stacked back up into the right format. All right, let me know if you have any questions. In the end, a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training courses. In case you are a beginner and you want to start out your journey with Power BI, learn the basics really well, the Power Query part, data modeling and DAX part, and then even try to solve more difficult, more challenging problems of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around. Indeed, this was a short one. I hope you like it, and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.